Oh, okay. So I guess you can see the shared screen, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Good. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. So uh, as you can see, the topic, uh, the uh, the chapter, chapter five, is entitled Word Formation. And right from the beginning, uh, when we talk about formation of the words, which means we talk about the creation of new words, the creation of a new meaning, maybe, of the same word, or the creation of some particular extensions of the word. English language, as you know, as other living languages, uh, has, has the ability to, uh, to keep changing, and new English words are added to the dictionary. There are lots of new English words uh, we can learn to improve our own understanding of the English, whether we are native speakers of that language or we are learners of that language. For example, for us English, uh, uh, we are learners, uh, uh, um, uh, English learners as a second language. So English is not our own native language, it's uh, the uh, foreign language and we try to learn from it uh, as possible. So, uh, uh, of course, each year we have uh, new, maybe tens of new words that uh, 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 undergone the, uh, the dictionaries. So one of the best examples, and this example is very close to our life, is that the coronavirus uh, terminologies, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, uh, vaccine, vaccinations, or vaccination, all these words are new to us, maybe. They have some particular meanings in the lab or in the chemical, maybe in the, chem in the medical labs. But for us as uh, English learners, we might not have uh, acquainted with these terms before 2019. So uh, this is why the reason we, we say that languages, for example, English language is changing. It's changing in the, in the in meaning that we have a new words that come uh, to be included in the dictionaries. The question is, how are new English words discovered? And how do we, we, do we as learners, do we as learners use these languages in our daily academic writing or maybe in our daily conversations? So a new English word gets into a dictionary when it is used by many people. Of course, when I have, for example, uh, maybe hundreds or tens of people who use a particular or some specific words, this is not guaranteed uh, that these words are going to be uh, lexicalized, going to be uh, uh, included in the dictionaries. And all these people should agree what that word or what these words mean. So if I know, for example, uh, the word uh, glass, I should have a guarantee that Zainab, Tabarak, uh, Sajjad, Klaas, Tajir, Anwar, and so on, know the meaning of glass so as to use it and so as to uh, have the, 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 the very word spread all over the world. Well, now, uh, new words are used in conversations. Of course, many, many of the words are now used in the chat rooms. Uh, um, we have uh, a lot of examples and we will explore these examples uh, um, during or throughout the, the, uh, our class today. Now, um, when we have one person who uses that word, then others pick it up. Uh, as a result, accordingly, the use of this word will spread. For example, the word lol, L-O-L. I think you use it maybe daily when you uh, talk to some native speakers. So lol means lot of love, a lot of love. Uh, so uh, instead of writing these three words, we have uh, to uh, an acronym of these three words or expression to be uh, uh, coined, uh, to be abbreviated, to be LOL. In the past, LOL, as an example, uh, I guess you heard about the word LOL, if I'm not mistaken. Guys? Yeah. Okay. So, yes, yes, uh, it's that, yes. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So now, uh, let's say some 10 or tens of years ago, the LOL had not been found in dictionaries. But nowadays, when you uh, uh, go to any dictionary, uh, you find the LOL. You find this abbreviated form of the expression. Also, maybe you find the word VIP, very important person. This is the, the same word, very important person, now comes to be used to talk about things that is classified as something secret. For example, 
when you have two people and these people are sitting and chatting or uh, talking about a particular subject and you entered into a room, you find those two people, uh, you may ask this question, VIP talk, for example, is this confidential? Is this, is this something private? So now the, the VIP, which means very important person, to refer to a kind of prestigious word, uh, in the past, it just used to be uh, uh, to call those people who are very important. But nowadays, with the, uh, let's say, with the extended or the spread or the extended use of word, of the very abbreviated form of VIP, the very word comes to mean something else. So we have now what? Additional meaning is added to what to uh, the meaning of the very word. Uh, so um, again, now when we say that this word is, uh, uh, for example, uh, very common. It means we have now the majority of people who use this word as well as they understand the meaning of that word. Now, that doesn't mean that all the new words, all new invented or new formed words are going to be included in a dictionary. Particularly, we have something that is related to the people's need of using this word uh, uh, in a, a wide variety or wide range of, of usage. Now, when we have, for example, some words, and these words are not going to be very, very much uh, used uh, in the media, let's say, uh, this word or these words are not going to be very much popular to us. يعني هناك كلمات كثيرة ما ما يعني ظهرت إلى 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 الأرض إلى الأيام واردت إلى أسماعنا. لكن هذا لا يعني أن هذه الكلمة سوف تدخل. القاموس سوف تكون كلمة let's say متداولة بين في الأرجاء. إلا إذا كان عندنا the condition of uh, we have mass use of this word يعني استخدام واسع لهذه الكلمة and the meaning of that word is understandable to those uh, who do not know uh, the meaning for the first time. Uh, uh, again, here we have some of these words are not formal, they are slang, uh, similar to the example that I gave you, which is lol. So now, uh, this, the, this, uh, this word, the very word, I mean LOL, uh, SMS now, send me an SMS, text me. Now the very word text, text, now text means not. But nowadays, text me, it means send me a message, okay? So now it changed to be a verb again now. We have, of course, a long list of words. I don't care to uh, enlist all these in our class, you know, because we are restricted to time. So this is just a very brief introduction to what is meant by word formation. All what I have said is just uh, uh, on a broad uh, term of the usage of the word. But uh, specifically, we have something related, some particular topics and subtopics that are related to the word formation, and all these are, as you know, included in the first part of the of the chapter. We may start with the neologism, then we move to etymology, then we go to bor borrowing, sorry, loan translation, compounding, blending, clipping, uh, hypochorism, back formation. All these are what are processes of word formation. In other words, the main title, let's say, the main umbrella of our class is what the word formation or the word creation. But let's say the uh, the this heading has got uh, different subheadings. Adat anawin the, the ones that I have just stated, all these work together to form new words. These come to be uh, in our dictionaries. Okay, so um, now we may start with the first part of the section of, of the chapter, which is. Neologism. Now, uh, this is a very nice story here. Uh, I guess you read it. So, uh, around 19, uh, I mean, the, let's say the last century, maybe the one, uh, in New Berlin, uh, we have what? A department store worker named this name, uh, Murray, Murray uh, Spangler. Now, Spangler, uh, this person invented uh, an electric uh, suction sweeper. Uh, this device eventually became very popular among people. And they start or started using Spangler to mean something. Now, what we have in the beginning is the proper noun. This is the name of 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 the name of
Later, this word developed to be used as as a noun, as gerund, maybe as a verb, as an adjective. We have uh, uh, many examples of the very word spangler. So now, a spangler. People could have been spangler, spanglering. It means cleaning their floors, or they might even have spanglered. It means cleaned their rugs or and curtains. So the use could have extended, as I said in the beginning, to a type of person who drowned on and on. Drowned and on. And how the not of that even. Maku is someone who drowned on and on. And he keeps cleaning the place. How the shakhs described as uh, spanglers, spanglerish, sorry. Uh, or to a whole style of behavior of spanglerism. So we have different extensions. I mean, a kalima wahda, but it expanded and added to it. It could be a word, it could be a noun, it could be what it is. In fact, it was the same. Later, maybe after some few words, this invention had been uh, uh, sold to somebody who's called uh, whose name is whose name is William H. Hoover. Hoover is now what a very uh, well-known. Uh, trademark of vacuum cleaners يعني ماركه معروفه لادوات التنظيف المكانس الكهربائيه not only did the word hoover become as familiar as a vacuum cleaner all over the world but in britain people still now as a lot people talk about hoovering hoovering means cleaning again not sprangling يعني بعد ما بيع هذا المنتج منتج عفوا اصبحت الكلمه اللي حكينا بها هذه uh, in 1900 اللي هي spangler Uh, uh, after the invention of the electric suction sweeper. In the beginning, people used it widely, but later when this uh, uh, device uh, sold to somebody else, the pe pe people sort of there started using Hoover instead of Sprangle. Uh, this is an indication, or this is we have what uh, a message delivered to us in a way or another, uh, that this is what is called the new logism. This is what is Uh, exactly the meaning of neurologism. Let's read some of the lines that I highlighted in front of you. Now, the point of this small talk is that although we had never heard of Mr. Spangler before, we really, we really, sorry, <clears throat> had no difficulty copying with the new word. I mean, we don't have uh, any difficulty to be familiar with this new news of the word. Spangler, Spanglerish, Spanglerism, Spangling, Spangrel, and so on. That is, we can very quickly understand any word. Nowadays, when we talk about viruses, the first thing that comes to our mind is what? Coronavirus, al virus taji. Now, this ability must derive in part from the fact that there is a lot of regularity in it. Well, you have the diagram, you know, this word should be uh, spread widely, and the meaning should be agreed upon by all people, by all users of that language. And here you have the regularity in the word formation processes in a language. Uh, we may move now next to etymology. Before I start talking about etymology, is there anyone is, uh, interesting in uh, introducing us the etymology and what's the meaning of etymology? Anybody uh, has the interest to give us some uh, information about this uh, term, please? Yes, uh, Tajid, sorry. Yes, Tajid, and next uh, will be Amal. Okay, Tajid. Go ahead, Tajir. Tajir, can you hear me, please? Yes. Go ahead, please. You want to say something? What was the question? So, uh, you raised your hand. Uh, my question was, if anybody has the interest to introduce the term uh, uh, under discussion, which is etymology. Uh, okay, uh, let's move to a class, I, class Abdul Hamid. Oh, sorry. I, uh, yeah. I just ditched it. Again, please. I had an idea, but I ditched it. <laughs> I decided not to say That's fine, okay, no, no worries. Okay, Amal, please, Amal. نعم استاذ جوهر ايتيمولوجي از ذا ستادي اوف ذا اوريجن اند هيستوري اوف ا وورد ا تيرمز كام فروم لاتين اند اوريجنز ان جريك وي هاف ماني وايز باي ويتش وي كان انتر نيو ووردز 
and the, some of those words uh, whom least technical is uh, regarded uh, regarded as uh, regards as uh, uh, barbaric and uh, misuses of language. Okay. Uh, That's okay Thank you very much. Uh, Let me give another chance to to your colleagues, please. Thank you very much, Ama. You did great. Okay, Ikhlas. Ikhlas Abdul Hamid. Yes, sir. Uh, etymology, the term uh, mean uh, the study of uh, urgent history and uh, derivation of uh, how words origin, are origin, created. Origin. Origin. Okay, origin. That's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the der uh, derivation of how words are created and developed through uh, time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? So thank you very much for that. Uh, I guess. Okay. Excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, uh, every language, uh, uh, in, in, uh, every language, uh, entered the new words. Uh, that's good. Uh, uh, I think that's good. Uh, no, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Of course, all languages need some uh, need to borrow some words. Out from the very language. We'll talk about that later in the coming sections and subsections. Thank you very much, Akhlas. I guess I have Anwar now. Anwar Adul. Yes, yes. If you are interested uh, to do something, please. Yes, etymology is a technical term, linguistic, it refers to the study of the origin and history of words in the language, uh, the origin and uh, historical development of the words. Uh, well, the language. Fine history development as far as uh, the pronunciation the word uh -huh. the spelling that's, that's of the word yes. correct yes. as uh, far as the spelling of the word uh, right. as as uh, far as the meaning of the word right uh, when uh, we uh, we say language is changing uh, mm -hmm. if you say does if uh, he study historical development uh, the origin mm -hmm. uh, the word language we are uh, doing etym uh, etymology. Right, uh, this is correct. When uh, we speak about etymology, etymology of a word as a technical linguistic uh, refers to study the origin. This is uh, and Yes, uh, uh, this uh, process, um, yes. Right. Okay, uh, I think you finished, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Anwar? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, this uh, process have been at work for a long time, and uh, they should be considered uh, as a sign of the uh, visuality and the creativeness of language. Yes, very di yes. Or directly related to the creativeness uh, and one of the most important qualities or properties, yes. sorry, of language that we studied in the previous chapters. It is about creativity. Again, creativity in the sense that people or users of that language tend to use or practice using these new words. And these new words will create, of course, new patterns and new... Uh, forms of sentences. So, so we don't have one unique sentence. We have different varieties of sentences uh, to talk about one particular object. So this is very, a very great introduction. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I may now go to the book with the etymology as your colleagues stated. Uh, the study of the origin and history of a word is known as the etymology or its etymology. Now uh, this is uh, of course uh, uh, come from Latin and uh, but has its origins also in Greek. So now this is the history. Now, if you are interested in the etymology, uh, you may download or install Merriam-Webster dictionary in your mobile phones or maybe in your laptop computers. So now uh, each word in the dictionary, uh, you will be uh, uh, or it will be very easy to access to the origin of each of the words that are listed or included in the dictionary. I mean, Merriam Webster Dictionary. You can download it and you find the uh, origin and the history, maybe a brief history of each word. Okay, so, but it is very important now to uh, not to mix between etymology and 
uh, etymologies, uh, entomology, sorry, and etymology. Now, entomology is what is the alam uh, al while etymology is the what is the uh, investigation of the origins or history of a particular word. Um, now, we soon discovered that there are many different ways in which new words can enter the language. We should keep in mind that these processes have been at work uh, in the language for some time. word or maybe group of words uh, become stable uh, understood by uh, the majority of people so it takes time for anywhere to uh, be included in a dictionary and even uh, uh, used widely by people a lot of a lot, a lot of words uh, daily used today uh, were at one time considered barbaric now uh, barbaric in the in the sense that it is very uh, uh, very strange, so people do not accept to use it. Many of these examples, uh, uh, maybe if we go back in history, 50, maybe 70 or 80 years ago, uh, the uh, aviation, uh, so aviation in the first instance, it was not very much accepted by people. How for a human being, to be able to fly in air. So, air air asymmetric. So, uh, this is in the beginning. But later, when, when with the new discoveries, with the new technologies, and all these talk about the aviation, and now we have what? A lot of stories and tales about the uh, Mars traveling. Maybe after 20, 30, maybe 50 years from now, in the future, the uh, word, uh, the Mars travels, uh, become very familiar. We may have some uh, agencies as, as well. So uh, rather than act as if the language is being de debased. So we might prefer to view the constant evolution, nash uh, evolution nash of new words and new uses of old words. Uh, my comment on this line here we have for example the adjective nice so uh, maybe hundreds or tens of years ago nice is not a good word to use with people you like it's not a praising word nice was a uh, fool and the meaning of nice used to be as fool so when you say nice person it means fool person but the meaning of this word gradually became or has become different nowadays. It now, when you praise, when you say, this is nice, maybe this is very kind of you. So, so this is, uh, I mean, the meaning of the word, the root meaning, has changed to be something else. So it is developed by time. Uh, borrowing, of course, all languages borrow particular uh, terms and particular words. Uh, if we start with the Arabic language, we have, for example, alcohol, we have cotton, we have uh, camel. So no, these words have been borrowed by different languages, including English language or the English language. Uh, and this, uh, now, uh, 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 in, in return, in Arabic, we don't know the word Google. Google in the dictionary, if you want to check the dictionary, Google means bo'bo al ain but now the use of google but google so google means search engine the same the same word is now meant to be or is now can be can now be used to uh, to be a verb so now google it it means an imperative sentence to it, it's an order and now google it means search for the word search for the meaning of the word if you uh, are in, if you are lacking the meaning of Word. So now here we have the book supplies us with some, uh, let's say, a list maybe of 12, if I'm not mistaken, 12 words. These words are borrowed from different languages. Tattoo from, uh, from Tahitian, uh, piano, Italian, uh, jewel, French, Lilac, Persian, Sofa, Arabia, and so on. So uh, here we have these, all these words now found in all English dictionaries. However, the origin, as you can see, is in contrast by brackets. 
Uh, other languages, of course, borrow terms from English. Here we have what? A long list of uh, maybe uh, of languages that borrow English words. We have the Japanese, we have the Brazilian, Portuguese, or Brazilian Portuguese. We have a number actually of Germany as well, French as well. Those who borrowed uh, some particular words from uh, English. Uh, up to now, is there any question, guys? Do you think you missed something important? Do you think everything is clear, guys? Shall I proceed? Shall I continue? Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. It is it clear? Yes, okay. sir. Good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sharing or borrowing, sir. Sorry? Sharing or borrowing words. Uh, borrowing, I, I got it. Okay, but before borrowing what? Sharing or borrowing words. Sharing, from, uh, sharing? Oh. Yeah. yeah. No, linguistically, it's borrowing words or borrowed words. The process of borrowing is borrow the borrowed words. So the process of uh, when these words come into being, and at the whole, لما صدرت واستوردت من باقي اللغات ليست الإنجليزية فقط. Originally it is Arabic, but because they don't have the equivalent الكلمة البديلة أو المساوية للكحول, so they borrow the word from other languages. So uh, in general it is borrowing, and the words uh, uh, that come from different languages or exported to other languages are called the borrowed words. So not the shared or sharing. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, so now let's talk about the loan transaction. Also, it's a kind of borrowing. So in, we keep in mind one important thing that what we are going to talk about and describe in this section, I mean, which is uh, uh, to be uh, uh, understood or to be discussed today, sorry, uh, all these uh, terminologies are going to be or are really under the umbrella of word formation. Now, we have now another technique, which is a special type of borrowing. It's very close to borrowing, by the way. It's called now loan translation, or calc. In this process, there is a direct translation of the elements of a word into borrowing language. Originally, we have a word, and this word is borrowed and then translated. So the basic root, or let's say the uh, the basic or the spirit of the word is still as it is, but maybe the structuring or the composition of the word is different. So we have again here a lot of examples. Now uh, we have the cloud scraper, uh, scrape sky. You see here Shufasena. Originally, it's what skyscraper, not the hat saha, but in German. They change the composition of the very word, or to the composition of the compound words. Other kelma or some more To mean what? Falkes and Kratzer. To mean in English cloud scraper. يعني هنا لما ترجمت غيروا الموقع أي ما تتكلم هذا السؤال اللي هي أصلاً compound now. Again, here we have a long list of these. Uh, hot dog, for example. I uh, tend to use some words that are very familiar to us. Hot dogs. من مستخدمه Spain, Spanish. The when they use this word, they use it in this way. I don't know Spanish, so uh, um, it's not my chance actually to uh, read Spanish words that I don't know. هذه هنا لما تترجم حرفيا it's going to mean what dogs hot. However, the origin of the word is hot dog. So there is what uh, uh, let's say that kind of switching. The word from one position to another. Boyfriend also may become friend boy. So we have a lot of these. All, all these examples are what are called, or this process is called, loan translation. Compounding. <clears throat> and some of the examples we have just considered there is a joining of two separate words to produce a single form. Thus, now the compounding also it's a word or it's a process. Uh, of forming words, maybe new words, but the process itself is different from one station to another. So it's a long journey, actually, which may, through which we can 
come across maybe six or eight terms to understand the uh, the whole or let's say the main topic which is wave formation one of those is compounding now let's see what we, we what we what we have in the compounding so now there is a joining of two separate waves okay to produce a single form thus lan and wort are combined combined to produce lan wort in german this combination process technically known as compounding which is very much uh, common where not in all languages Maybe in German and English, this is very widely spreading in these two languages. But in French and Spanish, it is rarely used. Yani, for example, uh, we have seat belt, bookstore. So book is one single word. Individually, it means something. Store also means something. They combine these to what to mean or to you or to, to form a new compound now, a new compound, which is bookstore. Sky, sky, skyscraper, as we said, textbook, wallpaper, uh, blackboard, waterbed. We have tens of these examples. Uh, uh, fast food, you see. But keep in mind, sometimes when these words combine together, the, the, the meaning might be changed also. I mean, when we have book, kitab, store, machzen, book store is different. But when we say, for example, uh, seat belt, seat maqad belt hizam, so hizam al aman, it's uh, it's uh, relatively similar to the original meaning of the words before they are combined together. Pop. Uh, so we have, as I said, now these two paragraphs supply us with different examples, with a variety of examples that all uh, under the umbrella of word formation again. Now, for blending again here, we have another technique of word formation. With the blending, we do what? The combination of two separate forms. To, now, you see separate forms. To produce a single new term is also present in the process called blending. Up to now, blending and uh, compounding are similar. But in a blending, we do what? We typically take one, only one beginning of one word and join it to a to the end of the other word. Yani, when we have two words like these, as you can see, smoke and fog, to produce a smog. So this is a new invented word, a new blended word. This word originally came from where? From the two words, smoke, I mean the beginning of smoke, SM, and the end of the word fog, to what? To be combined, all these four letters combined together to produce smoke. <laughs> In the places where they have a lot of this stuff, they can jokingly can, uh, make a distinction between smog and so again here uh, we have different and uh, different examples. Very interestingly to go to this word uh, that I'm highlighting, brunch. Now brunch come from what? From breakfast and lunch. Now the abbreviated words here we have BR from break and we have the what? The uh, UNCH from lunch. These uh, 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 combined or blended together, sorry, to mean a branch. Branch, but mana in the whole wajbat al al hiya gada ma al aftar. يعني الوجبة بالنص لا هي غدا ولا هي aftar. So maybe at معرف at ten o'clock maybe or eleven in the morning. So uh, uh, here uh, we have some people who have their own first break fasting, which is branch. Uh, Motel, which comes came from motor and hotel telecast on television and broadcast and so on uh, now it is okay to uh, be familiar with one not all these combined words or blended words are originally from the same language so mungkin in now we have one french word one english word one german word one french word combined or blended together to form a new english word yeah mungkin ان تاخذ كلمه من اللغه الفرنسيه واخرى من الانجليزيه تدمج سويه so this is very important again to understand uh, also here we have what a very rich uh, paragraph and this paragraph is actually pregnant of uh, examples like i may talk about modem in the web and stuff the internet uh, so these uh, this word come or came from two different separate words which are modulator and demodulator Okay, any questions up to now, guys?
Any questions? Yes, no. any, any, please. Any addition or question? Go ahead if you have. Yeah, uh, blending uh, uh, random process, or we have some rule to. Uh, we don't it. have any rule, class. There is no rule. The rule, the only rule is that mass use of the variable. يعني كلمة يستخدمها الناس وتصبح شو هنسعدنا برامج للترندينج وما شابه كلمة وتطش على قولتهم. So we don't have any basic rules to follow so as to blend two words to come. But how this word is uh, originally formulated, we have what the explanation. من أين جاءت هذه الكلمة? Smoke. It came from smoke and fog. But there is no regular base or regular uh, foundation to follow. Okay? Okay. Good. Now clipping. Uh, it is another process of word formation. The element of reduction. الآن أصبحنا reduction في التقليص. This is a noticeable. يعني مثل ما كان قدم branding is even more apparent in the process of script clipping. So clipping is what now? اللي هو التقليص أو الاختصار. But in a different way. The process is different. The, the result is is similar. This occurs when a word of more than one syllable. Now not all words. Not two different words, but one single word. But that word should not be of one single uh, syllable, but it is at least from two syllables. Now, as you can see, the word I'm uh, highlighting, uh, facsimile. Facsimile, sorry. So facsimile uh, is reduced to be what? To be fax. Before you read the, the section, you don't know maybe the origin of word fax, which is facsimile. But after you read it, you are expected to know facts comes from what? It is to broaden and widen our knowledge and our ability to understand vocabularies, to add new vocabularies to our language. And this is very important for us as learners of a foreign language. Facts comes from facsimile. Uh, gasoline uh, 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 is uh, clipped to be gas. Now, gas, very familiar word to everybody else. Now, the origin of this one is what? Gasoline. But it clipped, to mean the word as you can see. Not with words or nouns, maybe with the proper nouns, as you can see here. So sometimes, in the beginning, or in the beginning of this process, I may take this example, Tom, which is very familiar to everybody again. Tom is now used formally and informally. But originally, this word is clipped from what? Tom comes from Thomas, Sue from Susan, Sam from Samson, and so on. So nowadays, it's very uh, uh, familiar to every one of us to use Tom. But now we need to stop and to know the origin of this term, which is Thomas. This, of course, is important for us in our education. Again, it is to add something to the list of vocabularies that you gain while you study the targeted language. Now, uh, I think here we need to stop to have some five minutes break, and then we resume to complete and to come across to the rest of the sections as well as the subsections in the chapter. Okay, let's have the five minutes break, break and then we'll resume.
Okay, guys, now let's resume uh, to finish what we have already started. Uh, up to now, is there any question? I repeat, is there any question you want to comment? Do you want to add something you feel it's important to stress and to repeat again? Can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me, students, please? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions? Yes, question. Okay. Everything is clear. Everything is clear. Hope so. This is very interesting. Well, uh, now we need to talk about uh, uh, hypochorisms. That's a particular type of production again, favored in Australian and British English, not in every world. Or everywhere so this is very favored actually and these are uh, maybe in, in Australia and in British or in Britain uh, produces forms technically known as hypo uh, or hypochorism in this process what we have a longer word is reduced to single syllable then we have to add at the end of the word the Y and the E the IE Again, here we have class. May we might, uh, I think, you ask me such a question or somebody else that if we have some regular basic uh, uh, formation process to follow, we don't have any regularity, but it, it happens to be like that. Now, uh, for example, when we have longer words, as we stated, so moving pictures, moving pictures nowadays is not familiar. Maybe the, uh, the one which we use is movie. Now, we don't have somebody who says, uh, okay, let's uh, watch a moving picture, or sorry, moving pictures. We don't have anybody here, we don't hear anybody to say this one. But what we have is what is movie. Now, the word or the two words are reduced to, what? to one word in this form. Tally, again, uh, uh, originally is originated or hyper-coronized, uh, from television uh, we have also uh, barbie we have as you see here a long list of words again uh, which are reduced uh, to what to a smaller or yeah, to a shorter word because it is very easy for people to use it now handkerchief uh, hanky so breakfast brekky so you see here but uh, Bicky for Besquit. So we have, again, as I said, a full paragraph, maybe half of the paragraph. All these are pregnant with examples of the hypercorisms. Back formation <coughs> is a very specialized type of reduction process. Is not brought process, sorry, is known as back formation. Again, here, Typically, a word of one type is reduced to form a word of another type. Yani, uh, we have a part of a speech, and this part of a speech, for example, the nouns or the verbs, maybe adjectives, uh, extended to be in a different or an, addition, an additional category. Now, I, in the beginning, said Google, which is, in the beginning, when it appeared, when it emerged, it was a noun, only a noun. But nowadays, it can be a noun and can be a verb. Now, uh, we have television as a noun, and we have televise as a verb. We have donate as a verb, originally come, came from the noun donation, okay? Emote to refer to emotion. Now, emotion is very widely used. Emote is also. But in the beginning, before this word back formed, يعني قبل أن so, in the beginning uh, uh, of the use of emotion, it, it was just a noun. But nowadays, it is a noun and it is a verb. And when we say a verb as a category, here it means that we are able to add third person singular S. We are able to uh, change it into what? To, into, uh, uh, into past, to say emoted. So, all these again are the uh, kalimat are very widely or spread spread among people. Now, this is not a condition that these words which are back formed are going to be used in the very language only. Maybe it's going to be borrowed uh, in different for, to different languages and the category still has got just one form in the origin language. 
uh, opt again as a verb ca came from option. Now, one very regular source of back formed verbs in English is based on the common pattern worker. We all know work and worker. So worker in the beginning was just a noun, but later it comes to be work, work, working, work, work, and so on. Editor and edit, another example. Sculpture, or, uh, yeah, sculptor, uh, so and sculpt. Burger and bulk, and so on. I think this is the end of our class for today. But I need uh, you, if you, again and again and again, if you have any question you want to raise, anyone wants to or is interested to present us uh, something uh, that he or she feels is important to add. Uh, still, the floor is yours. If you are interested, again, to add something, I'm all ears. If not, it's okay. We can stop the record. No addition? Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh...